Let's go. I did it. Woohoo! Welcome back to an episode in Icarus. It's been a long minute since we've been here. And in today's episode, I've got a fun journey to take y'all on. So as y'all can see, I have an ice box, but I need ice to keep my food items in here cold. So we're going on a journey to get ice all by myself. So I get all the way to the end and I realize, shit, I forgot to water and take care of my garden. <laughs> so I turn around, go back, and I'm going to be speeding some parts up and others not so fast but still sped up so we're not here for an hour. I go back, take care of my garden. And it's a good thing I returned because my little garden plots were really thirsty. Put and then put everything away and I'm ready to start my adventure again. <laughs> Only to find out that it's getting dusk and there's no way I really want to begin this journey by myself at night. So I call it a day and plan to get up early in the morning and hit it. As y'all can see, my downstairs is filling up quite nicely. In addition to my ice box, I've got a saltine station, I've got a cooking bench, and I really am enjoying the cooking in this area and want to explore more biomes to get more uh, resources to make those recipes. So now, with the nice resting buff I have from sleeping, I make sure I have everything I need for this adventure and I head off. In addition to making sure I have enough food for my journey, I have two water bladders, two oxygen bladders, and some building pieces to make a four by four or a little larger temporary base uh, as I'll need to stay a night or two depending on how long the storm is that you can see up in the right hand corner of the screen. It shows the weather forecast. And I'll also be taking some first aid equipment as well. And y'all get to experience my wonderful walkway that I built for no bloody reason. <laughs> Although I do enjoy going up and down that waterfall. I don't know, I'll go up and down, especially going down. It's, it's pretty fun. <laughs> This big waterfall that we're coming up on, I actually had some plans to make a base up on top of that initially. I still might do it down the road, who knows? But I have to turn around and go back. I have an idea, a general idea, of where I'm heading for the ice biome to get ice. And my plan is to hug the mountain range on the right. As I'm traveling, you see I have my bow and arrow ready and I am on high alert because as I've played in other uh, people's worlds and in this map, I know that as I come down this area, there are bears that will attack you. There are em emu that will attack you. Um, in addition to the wolves and buffalo for the most part, if you leave them alone, they won't they won't aggro you, you know, unless you aggro them first. And as of this time, we do have horses in this game now, but at the time we didn't have horses. Thank God for that. Because <laughs> they are just, you think they're all nice and wholesome creatures, but not, not niggers. So I've got, I'm ready to just fight off anything at the first sign. Here I'm contemplating whether to just go down here, take it slowly and go down, or go back and find a safer route. And since I'm going by myself, I choose the safer route. Mm -hmm. 
So, in one of the updates of Icarus, we got salt that you can mine, and the salt helps preserve your food, which is really nice. So, I don't have, I don't want to carry a whole lot and be over encumbered, but I do make room for salt, and you can carry a lot of salt without it weighing you down, which is really nice. So, while I'll, I'll pass up other things, I don't pass up salt. I know a lot of gamers tend to turn down or turn off the background gaming music. I'm not one of them. The music for me is a good cue as to when danger is near, like when, when there's something dangerous or something that you should be aware of. And without that musical cue, I, I'm afraid I'll miss it. I'll really be surprised. And I don't need surprises. I don't need too many jump scares. But not gonna lie, this background music makes me, it's too zen for my taste, and it does make me sleepy. <laughs> Playing this at night, I can be like, I'm ready for bed. <laughs> you can eat the pumpkins raw, you can cook them, and there's some really cool recipes that you can unlock, and I enjoy making those. Those red berries also, uh, not only do they serve as food, but if you're thirsty, they will help replenish your thirst. I've gotten better at killing the wolves. I either use the spear that I have or a knife rather than a bow and arrow. I only use my bow and arrow when they're when I can get like a couple shots in and then switch to my knife or my spear at the last for the last few stabs or whatever to kill them. So for those that don't play Icarus, the blue rocks that I'm passing by is oxide that you can actually put the rocks themselves when you mine it. You can put in a slot to help you breathe or you can put it in a little oxidizer that then goes into your oxygen bladders to help you breathe longer. Um, then the yellow rocks that we pass are sulfur and you can use sulfur for medicine and all kinds of recipes. First milestone on this journey is complete. I find the ice biome and I start getting the ice. Really excited about that. I don't want to venture too far in there just yet without making a shelter and putting down a bedroll. I see a nice spot where I can put a little temporary base up and out of the way of hopefully any wolves or anything that could hurt me. Uh -huh. 
I wish that you could manipulate the terraforming better in Icarus so that you could make better uh, bases and shelters and whatnot. So with my temporary base in place, I go out to explore a bit more of this new biome and get more ice and see, <laughs> just kind of, kind of scope things out. In this biome, I know that I could encounter polar bears, which I really am hoping I'm not, but there's also snow wolves. Speak of the devils. So I'm really glad that I set my base up before going out to explore more because I knew that there was going to be an incoming weather system. So I go there to get out of the weather and not take damage. I clip a little bit out of being inside the base. Nothing really happens during the weather. But then I go out when it stops in this biome and I go back into the snow biome. It's having a snowstorm and it's interesting you could go like literally uh, step out of it and it's sunny and it's not stormy and you walk back in there and it's it's snowing uh, the same thing happened uh, going to another biome where we uh, you step foot into the desert biome and there's a sandstorm and you step out and so it, it's interesting how that works I'm out here chopping down the trees that got knocked down from the storm in this biome to make a couple ramps to get up and down the rocks that my base is on. Since there's space in between my playing this game. I don't play it a whole lot. You know, I play it every few months or so. I'll have senior blonde moments of forgetting how to do things. And so I forgot how to do something and then I like how to take it out and then replace it down. So I'm chopping away at this. So I finished making my temporary base. I placed down a fire. You can't sleep without a, f a campfire next to you. And it's nice now to have the bedroll so that way not only can I sleep for the night and get the resting buff, but if anything happens, I can spawn here instead of all the way back at my other base.
A tip that I learned from another YouTuber is that when you hear the wolves howling, it lets you know that obviously that they're nearby, but it's a good cue. If you don't hear it, then you know, if, then you know that they're not around. Having played in a very similar biome on a mission, I knew that I needed to prepare to have warm armor to go into this adventure of collecting ice because it does get really really cold as you can see in the bottom left there's like a snowflake symbol and that's letting me know that it's I'm taking some uh, snow damage or frost frost damage I don't know some kind of cold as fuck damage <laughs> And not gonna lie, I'm a little chicken shit going further into this biome and I'm staying towards the side and not going in the middle to aggro any kind of wonderful creatures that are waiting to pounce on me. I don't have the best weapons, it's all wooden things and so yeah, I don't have a rifle or anything better to protect myself and I really don't want to die. So after sleeping and getting a nice sleep buff, I head out to return back to my main base. I leave this base intact because now when I need to get ice, I can just, I can come straight here and I, I can spend the night if I need to and then go back the next day. I think that I could probably do this journey here and back in a day, but just in case I can't that I have this in place. So now all I have to do is backtrack and now keep the mountains on my left and follow it back around until I see my base come into view. While I'm not quite at my base yet, I'm feeling really satisfied and proud of myself for making this solo trip by myself, for surviving the snow biome by myself. It's a big accomplishment for it's a big accomplishment for me as a gamer. Uh, I tend to rely on some of the seasoned gamers. And this is giving me the confidence of, hey, I can do this. I can branch out further on my own and do more things and without having to wait on someone else to go with me or have them do things for me. And I really, I really like that. And I'm proud for that, uh, that advancement for me as a gamer. As I'm heading back, I am thinking to myself how I could make it a little easier for myself to have little landmarks along the way so to help me go to the base in the snow biome and then on my way back. Because it is easy to kind of veer off course sometimes. The map system is good and the compass system is good, but it you can. You can veer off track and go, oh, where am I? And get disoriented. So landmark would help. Maybe a beam with an attached uh, wall to let you know, okay, I'm doing something, you know, a sign, something to let you know that you're going the right way. As I'm getting closer towards more familiar area, that surrounds my base. I am feeling quite relieved that it's like, woohoo, I made it. And it's nice to return home after a journey. Kind of feel like Frodo. <laughs> we make it home. I'm really proud and happy of surviving. I did it. I did it. Give me some ginger boots. And setting out what I had intended to do. Thank you all so much for joining me on this journey in Icarus. Stay tuned for upcoming videos in 2024. There's going to be more missions that I go on in Icarus and adventures in this world. Take care until the next video. Peace, love, and blessed be.